Uh, Pastor Carson asked us, first of all, to pray for guidance in how to um, invite families and children and youth to ministry opportunities. Um, we're going to be on September 18th, okay, September 18th. All families who are interested in learning about a ministry for children and youth or in learning how you can assist with this ministry, we're going to meet up at the youth house at 11.30 after Sunday worship. Uh, we're going to have a lunch and just some activities to get to know each other. Uh, we want the whole families to come that first time just to see what's going to be, we can talk about what's going to be offered. We're going to be including activities for getting to know each other. Uh, we'll be learning about God and the Bible, learning what it means to be confirmed in the church, and learning how to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. There will be lots of fun, fellowship, and learning together. So I hope you can come the 18th, 11.30 to 1 in the evening. Thank you. Where's the youth house? <coughs> you can explain it, Pastor Carson? Sure thing. Okay. There is a house uh, <laughs> just walking back through, basically through the woods, right from here. Uh, I know it sounds strange. It's like we're giving directions to the little red riding hood. Um, over the river or through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> There's two ways to get back okay. there. You can get down there through the youth house road that goes past the cemetery. Or you can walk from this parking lot down the side of Memorial Parkway, uh, walkway, and go straight back, and it'll lead you to the youth house. Yeah. So you can you can drive there if you were coming just. Uh, but where we are here, you just walk basically behind. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, we will we will make sure that we are clear, and we will walk with everybody that day on the 18th, so that everyone knows where exactly to go. Um, but we're excited to get to utilize the youth house and to share in ministry there as well. It's a good place. And so, all that, let's see, is there any other thing? I think that's good. Misty, do you mind sharing this in prayer? Let's do it. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day you've given us, this time, this sweet fellowship together. Lord, as we share your spirit. Lord, we have a very special gift from you, that gift of the Holy Spirit that belongs to believers in you, who have you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, thank you. Let us lift you up, Lord, in our hearts, Lord, in our minds. Let us be focused on the Word today. Let us hear from you exactly what you want us to hear. Bless Brother Carson that he may give us exactly the words you would like for him to share. Lord, you know how exactly to say them. You know the hearts that are in need and what those needs are. And you know what we need to hear. And Lord, you can take this message and help each of us apply it to our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to do that today. We love you, and it's in your holy name we pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And if I could get you to please stand together. And we'll read the Apostles' Creed. And if you need it, it's page 881. And then you're going to sing. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll sing it. <coughs> Let's read it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third day he rose from the 
295. We'll sing In the Cross of Christ by Glory, the first two verses and the last two. Because 
that might make me look bad, or what if they come for me or make me feel like I also <laughs> uh, am a bad person. But speaking up for somebody that is that needs some help is actually a really important thing. And people that follow Jesus have been doing that for years and years and years. And so when we think about our own lives, when we're in school, when you're maybe either the person that wishes someone would speak up for you, or when you're the person that could speak up for someone else. Someone that can be a friend for someone, and someone that you hope would be a friend for you. That's what this sermon is really all about. Elevating, lifting, and helping people that need help. Will you pray with me? Hold your hands like this. Dear God, Oh, you've got to repeat after me. Ready? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for today. For today. Will, you help us Will you help us to love you, to love, you. To love each other, to love each other. The, way you love us. the way you love us? In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Right. And here's sign language for amen. Ready? Amen. All right. Good job. I'll see you guys in the back of your seat. Thank you all for coming to Children's Moment. Love it. Um, and I'll ask our, our ushers to please come forward as you are able there. And let's prepare our hearts and minds, church, for our offering, our time of giving. This is, of course, giving monetarily, giving of of funds and money that, that helps the church do what the church can do. But I also want you to consider how best you can use your time, your resources. Uh, as we're going to maybe learn today, how you can, can use any influence even that you have in your relationships and how the kingdom of God might be proclaimed in and around you. Will you go to God and pray with me? Holy and precious God, we thank you for all that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for this place. This is your house. We thank you for your house where we can come, we can pray, and we can learn about you together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord, was I faithful And the things that we have done. It's like doing it unto Jesus. Um, it's a perfect song for this scripture and for this understanding of kind of what we're going into together. As a time of prayer, there are a few people to lift up on the <clears throat> uh, in your bulletin. There, there should be a prayer list as well, if you can see that. Um, there are many current and ongoing prayers, and for our shut-ins, um, please be in prayer for these folks. Um, every week there's a celebration and something going on, and there's, there's just heartache and um, some situation that people really need prayer. Um, and for those that, that need to be encouraged and remembered. And so, I just submit those names to you to pray for them in your own time. Um, and we will certainly pray for them together now. Will you go to God in prayer with me? Holy, precious God, we give you all praise today. We come to you as, as your servants, people who want to follow after you. We have decided to put our faith and trust in our very lives under your influence, under your will and your way. We are a strange people, and sometimes people look down on that. They wonder why someone would put their faith and trust and hope in you, God. Sometimes the world throws stones and rocks and daggers. Sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's with words. But God, we know that your son Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount, he starts the whole thing out by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those who are persecuted for your name's sake. Blessed are those that have taken ridicule. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the merciful. And God, we, we trust that these are all the places where we can find you. We can find you at work, in our own lives, and in the lives of others that are hurting around us. Help us today to not turn blind eyes to real need. Help us today to not turn off our voices and off any of our efforts to people that could really use it. Help us today to be your servants, following after you. In your holy and your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> well, will you stand as you are able for the reading of the word today? This scripture comes from the book of Philemon. It's not even worth mentioning which chapter because it's only one chapter. It's one of the smallest books in the Bible. It is the smallest letter that Paul ever wrote, but it packs a punch. And it deals with a big issue, and it deals with really identity of Christ. So will you hear the word of the Lord today? Philemon, verses 1 through 21. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to our beloved co-worker Philemon, to our sister, Aphia, to our fellow soldier, Archippus, and the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I mention you in my prayers, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the partnership of your faith may become effective as you comprehend all the good that we share in Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. 
for this reason, though I am more than bold enough in Christ to command you to do the right thing, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I'm appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to me. and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might minister to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent. In order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while. So that you might have him back for the long term. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave. A beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me as your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he's wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Oh, it's an interesting word. Uh, again, this is a letter, and most of the New Testament is a letter from Paul to some church congregation, some place in Colossus, Thessalonica, different places in Ephesus. But this time he writes to Philemon. Imagine getting a private letter but it's intended to be read in this house church. And how many people are in this house church that meets at Philemon's house? It's hard to say. But how many people could you honestly fit in your house church? It can't be that many people, right? And certainly Philemon, even though he might be somewhat well-to-do, certainly in ancient times of this nature, his home, would not be able to hold too many people. But here we see Paul, a prisoner. So while, G, uh, while Paul is in prison, he writes this book. Which is important to know just because I think Paul's had a lot of time to think. I think Paul has had a lot of time to consider who he's writing to, why he's writing, and also on behalf of someone that has been of great help to him. Onesimus. And we'll get to him in, in, in a moment. But he says to, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, and also to Aphia, our sister, and I, I think Aphia and this Archippus who he talks about, that might be Philemon's wife and son. Uh, that might be other leaders of, of the church, this house church. But one way or the other, it's probably folks in the household <coughs> that live with Philemon. Grace and peace to you. But he doesn't only come with grace and peace and good tidings. He comes with a real message and a real ask. You see, the truth of the matter is Philemon did wrong. Philemon left and did something and maybe even stole something. But it's also worth noting that, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, Onesimus did wrong. He fled and did something, maybe stole something that maybe he owes back to Philemon. But it's also worth noting that Onesimus is a slave of Philemon. Now, in the ancient times, in ancient Israel, many people had what is known as slaves. 
They were almost like indentured servants. They were people that worked to sometimes pay off a debt. They were sometimes people that worked uh, under a household name. It wasn't really the same way as maybe we hear the word today, but it's still not total freedom or equality or you can come and go and you get a fair way. I mean, let's be honest, right? So here's Paul asking something in the name of the Lord for you to do, and that is to forgive this guy, to release this guy, to take him back, not as a slave, but as a brother. It's a lot here, and we're going to hopefully be able to go through that together. And I just, I, I think there's a lot that we can learn from a simple letter that Paul is, is writing, but sometimes the times help us understand what he's after. And I think more than anything, the biggest obstacle that, that Paul is, is running up against, and maybe that Philemon would run up against, is this, there's a particular social status and social standing in good order. And, and I don't think that Paul is trying to completely upend all social orders. That would be difficult, right? But Paul is a follower of Jesus. And Paul has been, quote unquote, radicalized by Jesus. He, he's changed. He's, his heart has been completely changed and shifted. He quotes things like, there is no longer slave or free, man, fa female or male. There is no longer uh, Gentile or Greek or Jew. For our new identity is in Christ Jesus, our one. And in that, we find our hope, and in that, we create our new social understanding. And that's a different word. It's a different word for this time. It would have come across as even threatening, dangerous, and also just kind of bad economic sense. But Paul says, I thank my God always when I, I mention you in my prayers, Philemon, because I know that you love the Lord and because I hear of your love for all the saints. Evidently, Philemon and his house church, I mean, this is, this is no uh, fake Christian. This is someone who has really taken after the way of Jesus and, and his love for all the saints quite a thing to say. And so when Paul is asking, as someone in chains himself, asking for someone else who perhaps has been in chains under subservience of someone to be released, it, it's, a, it's a, just a different kind of a move. I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus, and I pray that your partnership of faith, and this word in the Greek is Koinonia. It's, it's like a partnership in the name of the Lord. A koinonia is a, a community of faith that says, we partner in the name of Jesus. A partnership with reconciliation and restoration in the name of Jesus. The koinonia will look different than any other kind of community in the world. It should look different. In fact, if it starts to look exactly the same as other communities in the world, then koinonia is not happening. Koinonia is community in Christ, partnering with Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from you, says Paul, but he moves to talking about different phrases that take someone, Onesimus, who is a, a slave or is, is under the, the subservience of his master, Philemon, and uses different language for him. He calls him his child. He says he's my heart. He says he's a brother. He's a beloved brother. He says he formerly was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful. 
to me, Angie. In Greek, the word Onesimus is translated to useful. His name is. So Paul is, is kind of playing with language in this letter a lot. And it's, it's like a beautiful prose of, he was indeed useless to you, and now is indeed his name to me. And I hope that you can see him for who he really is. His name is true. And may you not see him for what is on the outside or even the wrong that he did to you. May you come to see him for his name in Christ and his new identity that is in Christ. For he says, I wanted to keep him with me so that he might minister to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer, prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Paul is really not wanting to, to make more mandates and orders. They have enough of that in the ancient world, in the Roman Empire, and in other places where they've seen the church coerce people to do what's right. But this koinonia says, we want consent. We want people... To, to feel that, that when they come in, that, that, that the love of God changes a heart and they, in their own free will, choose to do what God and the Holy Spirit is showing them is right. Not because someone with more authority told them to do it. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal in the ancient world, and I think it probably is still today, that we do things because we seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we wrestle with issues. And we don't just do things because someone with power told us to do it. We do it because we believe it's right. So again, he's using language that gives him new identity in Christ. And urges him to say, and take him back, no longer a slave, but more than that, a beloved brother especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. In the flesh means here and now, the things that you see, your relationships, the world around you, your community, the people that know that you have a house church, the Roman officials that know you have a house church, the other community that's looking on and wondering, what is this koinonia all about and what's the difference about them and any other community? This is different. And if you forgive and pay the debt and then start treating someone who is well known as being subservient to you as an equal brother, a beloved brother with you, that's going to change the world in your neighborhood. That's going to change the way that people see you and, and, and for, for all, it's going to change the way people see Jesus. Because they will come to see that it's because of Christ I can no longer do this to you, Onesimus. I can no longer treat you like this. You are a beloved brother with me in the name of the Lord. That's different, isn't it? It's different. So Paul, in many ways, offering to pay his debt, Offering to find those places where he's done wrong and to put him on himself. Paul has definitely been influenced by Jesus. You know any other people that have taken on your debt? Taken on your wrongdoing and offered it. So that there might be reconciliation. You see, this is where Paul proves this is about Christ and not about his own recognition, his own puffing up. He says, yeah, yes, please, I, Paul, I'm writing this with my own hand. I'll repay it. Anything that has been undone. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. This would refresh my heart in Christ. Says, Don't you need some refreshment? And evidently, these are the types of things that bring it. It's not air conditioning. It's not lemonade.
It's not fancy cushions that make your knees feel better when you're praying. <laughs> it's using what God has given you to give back for others. It's using anything that you have, any resource that God has bestowed on you to bestow it back. To be a Christian, someone Christ-like, like Paul, who follows and wants to live his life shaped by the way of Christ. A koinonia, a group committed to offering a partnership with Christ and saying, in here, we're all brothers and sisters equal in the eyes of the Lord. In here, we all kneel the same. We all are, in the eyes of God, accepted, loved, and offered the saving grace of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Not one of us is a little more elevated in heaven than others. Amen? Amen. And so because that's true, then we don't do it on earth. Because in heaven we're not elevated a little higher than others, we don't act like it on earth. Because in heaven, there really is no male, female, slave, free, Jew, Greek, Gentile, Samaritan, good Samaritan, bad Samaritan. There's people who are fully embraced by the one that made them. Imagine if you could see one another the way that God sees you. Imagine if you could forgive one another the way God forgives me and God forgives and imagine if you could love one another and pass on to one another the way that Christ has done for all of us. That's koinonia. That's love for all the saints. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love this big Bible on this altar, and in the last uh, number of weeks I've been moving to where we are. So you see Philemon. Um, and each week, so, you know, as a, as a choir and as, as musicians uh, rehearsing, we, we try to go over a little bit about what the message is about, what the scripture is about. And we pray for you. And we pray for this place, we pray for moments like this. That people would not just come to church, they'd come to Jesus. That, that they would come to see the salvation that's in Jesus. They wouldn't just come to a religious institution. They would come to a Savior, to a Messiah that kneels down and washes the feet of his disciples. That's out of bounds, Jesus. That's out of social norm, Jesus. Jesus who would sit down at a, at a table and break bread and give it to each and every one, even those he knew would betray him. He did not withhold himself, nor does he team. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body. It's been broken for you. And do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples. He said, drink from his own. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of And Jesus reminded his disciples that, that we are one in Christ. And this one loaf, this one cup, is to represent our one church. And you are to be a peculiar people in the world. A people that is representing a reconciled, restored Christ. A koinonia. A community that aims at oneness. Oneness in Christ, not oneness for any other reason. 
oneness in the Lord. And he taught his disciples how to pray. And he prayed with him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.